Uh, hello everyone, my name is Kakfidet Ilsisikun and today I would like to show you my uh, project that I've been working on for like two years which is called Bitcoin Trend Prediction via Domain Adaptation. So this project, as the name implies, uh, is involved using historical prices to predict future price trends. So today, uh, let's explore what might be one of the solutions I have found. Okay. So first thing first, we need to prepare the data set. Uh, the data that I collected is from the Kaggle.com. It's mainly because it's free first. And it also contains uh, historical prices, more than 400 coins, including Bitcoin. And the data set range from 2013 to 2023, nearly the present day. And it also provides at the minute resolution. However, due to the sheer amount of volume of the data, I convert it into an hourly resolution. Uh, next, when analyzing regular prices, it might be challenging to clearly classify whether the trend is upward or downward. So to address this problem, we apply a log transform to uh, making it easier to identify whether they are increasing or decreasing. All right. Uh, we also modify the price data by entering additional feature, which is basically uh, an indicator that normally used in technical analysis. Okay, um, next thing is we divide this price data into chunks so we can use them. And we classify those chunks into three categories. We have an upward, downward, and neutral trends. Uh, this figure uh, shows the distribution of the does it on different year. Uh, after we prepare the data, we also apply the principal component analysis to explore its characteristics. Uh, but what is a PCA? PCA is basically a tool that simplify a complex high dimensional data to enhance visibility and visualization of the data. So I use the PCA with the recently created data set and found this. This plot shows the outcome of ap applying a PCA for each year, with each year represented by a different color. On the right is the 2013 data set, and the far left is the year 2023. Now take a moment and observe the chart. Do you notice any pattern here? I did, uh, and I found that the distribution of data is shifting from the right to the left as the year progresses. Uh, this thing is commonly known as domain shifting. Maybe this is the fundamental reason why many models fail because they does not uh, consider this problem, right? So we have to design a training pipeline and an architecture that is robust to the changing distribution of data, right? So I would like to propose a solution that I believe will be effective, which is inspired by attention is all you need. The key component of this model is including the encoder, attention, and decoder, or you can call it classifier. The metric measure using the area under curve, precision recall curve, all right? And the next thing is the training pipeline. We have multiple, multiple components to test. Uh, we define those settings for experimentation, and subsequently, we train the model on the data spanning from year 2013 to 2020. After we train the model, we will evaluate that those model on unseen data set. Uh, okay, so after we train the model, the result indicate each activation function performed differently, uh, but at this point, the AUCPR is relatively low, ranging around 30 to 40 percent. However, as the testing progress to identify the optimal component of the model, there were a gradual, gradual increase in the, in the AUCPR value. For instance, when exploring kernel regularizer, more models show AUCPR uh, score above 40. Another important factor was weight initialization. Uh, we found that the truncated normal is uh, helped improve the model significantly, resulting in an AUCPR value of 46%. So we have been testing on the encoder and classifier too, leading to the breakthrough with the AUCPR value surpassing of 50%. This massive milestone because models with AUCPR above 50 are usually profitable. All right. Nevertheless, the fine-tuning process in the final round led to a model configuration that can achieve 
impressive AUCPR result of nearly 60%. Okay, so the third phase is domain adaptation. After we found the optimal configuration, now it's time for the real work. We need to make those models work on the unseen years. So the method that I chose is transfer learning. In this pipeline, I train the model in the sort asset first, and then I freeze the encoder to retain its knowledge and adapt the attention and classifier to the new data set. Then after we train the, the model, we will evaluate those model on the unseen years. Okay, so these are the results. This, uh, this evaluation is on the sort data set. The model is already show impressive result on unseen year with an AUCPR of 62% in the year 2021. Now, after train the main source model, we freeze the encoder and train it again on the uh, data from the year 2021. Upon evaluation, the optimized model show impressive result with an AUCPR almost 60% on the data from the year 2022. And it is also occurred with the year 2023. We follow the same procedure, and the AUCPR is almost 50%. And the last part is the backtesting. So after conducting tests and trying various models, I found that the most effective way at evaluate whether a model is effective at predicting price is to backtest the model. So we conduct backtesting on all of our models, so start with starting cash at uh, one grand dollars on different years, and the result are as follows. So this specific model, uh, we train it from the year 2013 to 2021, uh, they are evaluated on the unseen data set from the year 2022. This implies that the model has never encountered this specific data point before, yet it still managed to generate a profit of 170% from its starting cash. However, not everything is perfect. After backtesting this model, we discovered that it still needs improvement for the year 2023. The issue is that the model shows not to trade any data point at all. So it avoids both losses and gain. So uh, this project is still a work in progress. If you have any suggestion or criticism about this work, feel free to discuss them with me. Uh, thank you very much for having me this Count Cup.